Welcome back to chapter 9. This is the second half of chapter 9, mass spec spectrometry. We have already covered introduction to spectrometry, uh, the sample inlet, and the first part of ionization. You can see this outline here. We've already looked at electron ionization, chemical ionization, and atmosphere pressure ionization. These are various types of uh, ionization technology that's used in mass specs. Today we will finish talking about this very important technique used in the forensic toxicology laboratory. In addition to ionization, ESI, TSP, APCI, APPI, and CID, and I'll try not to use the acronyms very much, we'll touch on the mass analyzer in the mass spec and then applications of mass spec in forensic toxicology. Okay, the next, the next, the one that we want to talk about <clears throat> on this list that we haven't looked at before is electrospray ionization ESI. It's the most commonly used atmosphere pressure ionization technique in mass spec and is used regularly in forensic toxicology. An electrospray interface has three main components, the nebulizer, the desolvation assembly, and the mesh electrode or repeller. Depending on the pKa of the compound and the pH of the mobile phase, ions formed in solution can be either positive or negative. Most electrospray ionization interfaces can analyze both positive and negative ions. It's particularly good with plants, alkaloids material from plant material because they are alkaline, which means they can be easily charged in solution and have some polar properties as well. Electrospay ionization interface is thought to help char charge the many functional groups found on large proteins and enzymes. This greatly extends the dynamic mass range of, of the mass spec detector that differentiates molecules on the basis of their mass to charge ratio and enables liquid chromatography electrospray mass spec techniques to analyze molecules with masses greater than 100 kilodaltons. This is an interesting diagram showing the desolvation process for electrospray ionization and thermal spray interface. You can see nebulizing droplets containing ions are evaporated when heated in nitrogen and notice that the droplet gets smaller and smaller and eventually negative and neutral fragments that you don't see here are removed from the system because it's under a vacuum. Techniques are used to just retain the positive ions. Only the freon ions remain at the uh, conclusion of the desolvation process. Here's a schematic that we'll see a number of times. It looks very similar from one of these types of ionization to the next. But this is the electrospray ionization interface for a liquid chromatography mass spec system. And incoming liquid chromatography effluent comes in through the diagram or into the system right here and undergoes nebulization into like a spray. And then a component of it gets drawn into a capillary tube and is presented into the collision induced dissociation or it's going to form fragments and eventually go into the mass spec analyzer. Okay, the next one we just want to touch on is thermospray, TSP, atmosphere pressure ionization. This is uh, thermal spray that's, that is a atmosphere pressure ionization technique, very similar to electrospray ionization. Ions are created in solution with buffers that permit the analysis of polar, thermally labile, and non-volatile analytes. The pressurized mobile phase is passed through a heated tube that vaporizes the solution. Here's atmospheric pressure chemical ionization. This is an ionization method complementary to electrospray ionization, very similar. So APCI is used for analyzing low to medium polarity molecules that are easily vaporized. It is also best that analytes do not contain acidic or basic sites. Compounds can be moderately volatile. And the atmospheric pressure chemical ionization interface has four components, the nebulizer, vaporization tube, the corona needle, 
in the desolvation mo module, very similar to what we've seen before. The liquid mobile phase enters the nebulizer and flows through the needle assembly and um, <clears throat> the nebulizer blows high pressure nitrogen around the needle and blasts the mobile phase into a fine aerosol. So it enters in right here, gets blasted, and goes through this corona needle through the capillary again into a chamber for um, CID to occur. Atmospheric pressure photoionization. Here is an atmosphere, atmospheric um, called atmospheric pressure photoionization. This is an interface that uses photons emitted by a light source to ionize analysts. The next slide shows the APPI or the atmospheric pressure photoionization interface, also very similar to what we have seen with other types of ionization. The diagrams look very similar. But atmosphere pressure photoionization uses a gas discharge lamp that emits UV photons at distinct energy levels. And there are three gra gases frequently used in APP, or um, as you can see here, the atmosphere photo pressure photoionization, krypton, archon, xenon. It can operate in both positive and negative ion modes. It is not limited by acid-base chemistry or by the compound's volatility. And atmosphere pressure photoionization can be used to analyze nonpolar to moderately polar compounds. And here again is an example of the atmosphere pressure photoionization interface for a liquid chromatography mass spectrometry system. And very similar diagram, the effluent from the liquid chromatography comes in here, is nebulized, and here we have the UV lamp uh, applying the photons. And then portion of the nebulized material uh, pulls in through a capillary into the CID, the collision-induced dissociation forming fragments for the mass spec. Collision-induced dissociation is what we've been talking about in each one of these uh, techniques. Um, as we have seen in slides depicting types of ionization, Collision-induced dissociation is a fragmentation technique used in liquid chromatography mass spec, mass spec, and mass spec in tantum, or ion trap mass spec application occurs when ionized compounds become accelerated in a fixed area by an electrical charge and then collide with neutral gas molecules like molecular nitrogen or argon or helium and cause fragmentation. In collision-induced dissociation, fragmentation is much less energetic than with electron ionization. Um, collision-induced dissociation can occur in the source and in the mass analyzer. It occurs before mass detection. And here, this figure displays cocaine fragmentation patterns produced with three different ionization techniques. Obviously, the higher energy energetic uh, electron ionization, EI, uh, produces greater fragmentation, whereas positive ion chemical ionization, the second panel, uh, has less energy and produces a minimal amount of fragmentation, as well as the electrospray ionization, this third panel. But notice all the various particles, fragments that are created. Most likely this peak over here for cocaine, its molecular weight is 300, we know that. There's the peak, the molecular ion peak, it's right close to 303, I think it is, 304, based on um, isotopes that might be present. So let's talk about mass analyzer for a second here. This is an outline showing the various types of mass analyzer typically used in mass spec magnetic sector, quadrupole, ion trap. Then we'll talk about MS, MS in tandem, and MS, N, and other analyzers, just touching on them. Magnetic sector. These instruments are usually not used in routine labs, such as analytical, forensic, or clinical labs. They're most often in research labs. MS instruct instruments, mass spec instruments, or magnetic sector, rather, 
instrument separate ions by means of a magnetic and electrostatic analyzer. The analyzers separate ions by the principle that when ions of different mass enter a magnetic field, the smaller ions turn more quickly than larger ones. Ions move through a slit that limits the mass that can exit the magnet. As ions enter the analyzer, they move along the curvature of two charged plates, depending on the energy of the ions, and this allows them to be separated. This is similar to a diagram that I used earlier in this chapter. Quadrupole. Quadrupole mass specs are the most common mass analyzers today. The quad is a set of four precisely machined rods. There, are, there can be four rods, six, or eight rods. Radial frequency and direct current voltages are used on sets of diagonally opposed rods, allowing only ions of a single mass to charge ratio or value to pass through the analyzer. All but, all but those of the specific mass selected are deflected into the rods. The mass spectrum produced is referred to as a full scan spectrum and is used when performing automated searches for mass spectral libraries. Specific masses can be selected so that only the specified mass to charge values are detected. This is called selected ion monitoring, SIM, S-I-M. And it's used for qualitative and quantitative analysis of targeted analytes. SIM analysis provides less spectral data than a full scan analysis, but is far more sensitive. With the increase in sensitivity, much lower amounts of analyte can be identified and quantified. And here is a, a diagram, an example of quadrifold mass spec. Many systems use more rods or a single shaped device that simulates four rods in the structure of the quadrupole mass spec. Ion trap is the next one on our list. The ion trap is best considered as a unique form of a quadrupole mass analyzer. Instead of being arranged parallel to each other, the four rods form a three-dimensional sphere in which ions are trapped. The trap consists of a central ring electrode and two end-capped electrodes. Um, the distances in the ion trap are short enough to use a lower vacuum in this particular system. And this diagram is trying to show this three-dimensional aspect of this structure of the ion trap spectrometry. And you can see the particles come in and then out. MS, MS, MSN. In recent years, the power of mass spec analysis has been increased by multi-stage multi MS analysis. This could be linking several quadrupole mass analyzers together in sequence. These are called tri these are called uh, triple quads due to the presence of three quadrupole analyzers in series. Today we have tandem mass spectrometers because quadrupoles are not the only mass analyzers used in sequence. Modern design may have a quadrupole as the first mass analyzer, Q1, in the next diagram, the second mass analyzer, Q2, may contain a quadrupole, a hexapole, an octopole, or some other design, the third mass analyzer, can contain quadrupole or an ion trap. And I think you can see it here, Q1, 2, and 3. The single ion that passes through Q1 is referred to as a precursor ion. The ions formed from the fragmentation of precursor ions are called product ions. MS, MS has tremendous advantages in the analysis of compounds. Since the first ion isolated could be the molecular ion, the likelihood of interference from other compounds that may also be in the source at the same time is all but eliminated. Of course, with the molecular ion, it's our pro it is our analyte minus one electron. Okay, other there are other mass analyzers and ionization techniques. One is called time of flight that has applications in toxicology. It is used for the analysis of large biomolecules biomolecules such as nucleic acids and proteins, and uh, time of flight is based on the principle that ions of different mass travel through space at different speeds when accelerated, accelerated with the same energy. The time between when ions are generated and accelerated toward the detector and when they actually uh, arrive is used to determine the mass of the ion. Okay, we're going we're gonna to stop here at this point. Thank you very much.